This is Charlie Montotuyello with Blue Bear Flutes. Uh, you guys have probably been following me for some time. Many of you, some of you may uh, have not seen that much of me and may think you've seen my one video or my two videos or what have you. Um, I do have a couple hundred, I guess. Um, anyway, I just wanted to share a little update with everybody and let you know a little bit about where I've been uh, and what we've been doing. We've been pounding away making a lot of flutes since the last video that I made. and. Uh, my wife and I actually opened a little restaurant in our little town, and, and uh, we've got that going on, and, and actually filmed some videos in the restaurant for, I guess, various, uh, like Instagram and what have you, maybe one on TikTok, I don't remember, um, but, uh, but we've been busy with that, and now we're back heavy hard into flute making and starting a few new videos. Uh, this video is just kind of a little update, like I say, on what we've been doing. Today is my 50th birthday. Yay! <laughs> I uh, turned 50 years old today, and we're actually sitting in um, the back porch of a family, a distant family member's home in Adams, Tennessee. The family members that own this home aren't the ones that I come to see here in Adams, Tennessee. It was actually people that they had some dealing with, which were family members also, uh, like cousins of these people, but those are actually a uh, closer family of mine, the Bats family. Uh, anybody that's interested in history or looking up something interesting, the uh, Bats family, Kate Bats, was called the Bell Witch. So this is um, the Bell's old house that I'm sitting here in. And Mrs. Bell was actually a relative of, of the Bats family. And uh, anyway, this is one of those little trails that you get sidetracked on in life that you go and, and find out... Uh, things about where your family come from and, and what they did. They moved to Adams, Tennessee here from North Carolina and uh, you know there's just so much so much history there it's amazing and the Bats family are actually Cherokee family of mine. Uh, they're related to a couple of other groups that are all throughout my family tree and, and like I said we wanted to come here and took some pictures and and uh, talk to one of the historians of the area which was really nice and, and very very fruitful and found out he was a distant relative as well, which is kind of neat. Not even on those two sides of the family, but Dad's family had a lot of dealings up here until they moved to Guntersville, Alabama, which is a, a really great place as well that I absolutely love and, and a very important part of my Dad's family. And that's currently where my tribe sits in Guntersville, Alabama. Uh, there are three Cherokee Indian tribes that are around the area that are historically from the area. And uh, a lot of the, the people here in Adams, Tennessee that I've met and seen pictures of in the old museum here and such, a lot of the people that grew up here had some native family as well. And I'm telling you this primarily because there are a lot of things in our world that uh, you get to see on the news and you get to uh, experience, I guess, in different ways and, and you think something about them one way or the other. And usually these days, if you watched it on the news or read about it, in some kind of media outlet, it's because you're being led to believe that. I can tell you that from having worked for giant newspaper companies for some time. I've actually had an experience with a, a lot of newspaper companies like Gannett and the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and even the USA Today, but uh, in Gannett I worked for about 17 different newspapers all across the country. And I've done everything from carrying the newspaper to advertising and in the legals department. So I've, I've seen it from one direction to the other. And I used to love reading the newspaper from Opelousas, Louisiana, which was a Gannett-owned paper. And I would read it versus the paper in my hometown where I grew up in Pensacola. And I loved reading the two of them together because the stories were identical. They come from the same place. They were Gannett-owned paper. And uh, I loved reading the stories because this one would say the same thing in this area but it would say it with a little twist, and in some cases, even a little racist twist to it compared to what it would say over in the town I grew up in. And, and uh, it was interesting how the newspapers took the same story and changed it just enough to meet the needs of the people in the area. And you would say to yourself, did they need to be racist? But most of the area in, in certain parts of the world are one way or the other, and they need to understand things the way that, and I say need to lightly, of course, that's with a kind of a tongue-in-cheek there, but they have to understand things a certain way, I guess you should say. Anyway, growing up Native American, growing up uh, in Native communities, growing up with family uh, from 
about four different tribes or five, I experienced that. I got to see how people talked in one area versus people talking in another area. I'll never forget one of, one of my distant relatives that we used to live with in Oklahoma. Uh, when I asked him when we were out at the Cherokee Holiday in, in Tahlequah, where are the turkey wings at? And he said, you got to go to Muskogee to get turkey wings. And I, of course, learned very close that I grew up with Creek Indians and I ate more of their food than I did the people in Tahlequah. Uh, that having been said, and it kind of brings me on to the reason I wanted to make this video today. A couple of weeks ago, I was sitting in a virtual meeting with the U.S. Senate discussing the Native American Indian, as we call it, Arts and Crafts Act. And most of you don't know about this, but Native people have, in a lot of cases, some crazy politics that doesn't look anything like the crazy politics that you have been seeing in the U.S. for the last many years. Uh, I mean, since Nixon, we've had some interesting stuff going on, but, but uh, the crazy politics we've had in the last five or ten years here in our country uh, doesn't scrap the surface of Native American politics. So one group of Indians will hate another group of Indians, and it goes around forever and a day. And I've read so many stories by one group or the other that hates this group or the other, and they're fighting for this and that. And a lot of times they're the same people. A fine example, when we lived in Tahlequah, one of my dear, dear friends there was a member of the Katua or the Ani Katua tribe. Uh, the Katuas are a federally recognized tribe of Cherokee Indians, and they and and. I like to put my disclaimer in my opinion because certainly I don't think we can profess anything as a fact anymore without somebody trying to call you out on it. Um, but uh, some of my friends would get some bad words said about them in the Cherokee Phoenix and uh, the CNO, I like to call them, the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma. They used to argue and fight with uh, the Katuas a lot, and they still do, but not so much to the public as they do, you know, with them. I'm not sure if the Katuas get along with them today and for a lot of reasons I could bring up and tell you because I know some of their history and I know where the Katuas come from, which is actually their name. They come from the town of Katua, which is important to know. Uh, a lot of people don't know where their family come from if they're southeastern Indians. A lot of people don't know if they're Cherokee, for example. You may have heard that your great-grandma was a Cherokee Indian princess and that's something that a lot of natives make fun of whenever you hear that kind of thing because everybody was related to a Cherokee Indian princess at some point in time. And I used to be one of those people that made fun of people that said their family was a Cherokee Indian princess. But uh, those words that people use were ignorant or maybe not, not really descriptive, but it's what they'd heard. It's hearsay. Now, today, if you belong to an Indian tribe, you have usually, some of us, have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt where your ancestors come from and a long time ago you didn't have to do that kind of thing and that's why and I hope my Eastern Band family and friends will forgive me for saying it but that's why we used to have something in North Carolina known as a uh, five dollar Indian now five dollar Indians aren't something you want to research it's not something you want to say to Eastern Band Cherokees because it will really make them mad uh, but to say the least, there was a group of people that, um, I guess presumably, put another one of those disclaimer words in there so I don't have somebody try to disprove me, even though I may know a bit of history. Uh, presumably, somebody used to sit out on the street corner and sign people up for that for $5, which wouldn't surprise me with the way that politics goes with every tribe. Now, the CNO have, in the times past, uh, pulled that one out of the bag a couple of times and I've got family that are I met them while I was in Oklahoma I didn't even realize I had family that were members of the CNO but I did uh, some of my dad's distant cousins and uh, it's not surprising not when I have an ancestor right now that is buried in Gundersville Alabama that lived in Tahlequah that when she got buried wanted to be buried at home not any place that she could have been pushed to. Not all Indian people were moved out of the southeast of the United States. There were so many loopholes and rules and regulations, and the Eastern Band knows what I'm talking about when I say loopholes, because that's the whole reason that they're there. God bless them, man. 
smartest, smartest Indians I've ever met. They really knew what they were doing, and I have a lot of respect for them. Uh, but the Senate meeting that I brought up, the uh, senator from Hawaii wanted to include his people in Hawaii, and I say his people loosely, Indian or <laughs> Native people from Hawaii wanted to include them in the protection of the Indian Arts and Crafts Act, which protects me currently today as a Native artist making the flutes we make. Uh, it protects me from people that aren't Natives calling their flutes Native made, supposedly. And uh, the uh, chief of the CNO, Chief Hoskins, was in that meeting, among other people. Some very brilliant people in this meeting from the Lumbee tribe that I have a great deal of respect for. A very old and a very large tribe of Native Americans in the U.S. Um, but uh, the senator from Hawaii wanted to include the Hawaiian Natives in the language for the Indian Arts and Crafts Act, which I completely respect. I don't know what kind of path this is going to put them on if they're going to have to grow, go through the rigmarole that people have to today to prove who they are so that they can be a member of a tribe that they, in some cases, where their family was from. <laughs> uh, or if it's just easy enough for somebody to be one one thousandth Indian, how can you be one one thousandth anything? Well, when I lived in Tahlequah in, o in Oklahoma, I had friends that I worked with that showed me their tribal cards. Uh, and I'm not ratting on anybody. I'm not saying that somebody is or is not anything. You know, anybody can prove anything these days, to be honest with you. Uh, going back to think about my days at the, at the newspaper business. But uh, anyway, I had a friend I used to work with. I bought a car from him while we lived in Oklahoma. And uh, he was one 132nd Cherokee. And I asked him, I said, how did you find out that you were one 132nd Cherokee? Because I grew up in Indian communities. And he said, well, I don't know how we found out, but we did it for the health care. And I'm like, okay. You know, he proved it for the CNO, for the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma. That's good enough. All you have to do is prove that your family is on those rolls and magically you're Indian. If you grew up there, you're Indian. Um, and you can be put on the rolls, which is the way that a lot of tribes actually had back about 30 or 40 years ago. They were uh, coming around taking rolls here way after the original Dawes and Baker rolls that happened forever ago after the Trail of Tears that most of the Western Cherokees call, that I like to call the uh, Indian Removal Act because I wasn't on that trail, even though I did have family, like I mentioned, uh, on that path. But uh, the... Uh, roles that were taken in the last 30, 40, 50 years were to make sure that everybody got counted. And uh, I do know from my own personal experiences reading into some of that that there were people that maybe were only half or a quarter or somewhere along those lines that got put on the rolls as a full blood. And that, I'm not complaining about that. If they grew up in Indian culture, you know, that's that's great. That's really good. And back in the old days, before the government came along and made these rules that certain tribes really love to follow uh, and, and instigate these rules, I'll say. Um, if you grew up in the tribe, that's what you were. If you were a Creek Indian that grew up in a Cherokee tribe or vice versa, that's what you were. And that's how the clan system in the Cherokees, which I'd love to go into great detail with here, uh, but for sake of time and making sure that y'all get the point of this, um, I won't at this point, but uh, but the clan system was like that. It was to make sure that we grew up with the right people and knew who we were. And I'll tell you a little secret about that. There were blue clan Cherokees, and I've met people in Oklahoma that say that their family were blue clan Cherokees, but being from blue clan Cherokees and paint clan Cherokees, which grew up together, um, I just can't imagine that. I can't imagine blue, uh, blue clan people moving to Oklahoma because the ones I knew would have died before they moved to Oklahoma, and most of them did. Uh, the ones that didn't die wound up in little pockets here and there. A lot of them forgot their culture, a lot of them didn't. And uh, today, they still have meetings in some of our real sacred sites that people out west don't know about, which is, God, <laughs> is powerful, important stuff. But uh, while I was in that meeting in the Senate, I was the only person from my state that spoke up and, and talked about it. And there were a hand, 
full of people that spoke up. One of them I remember specifically wasn't Indian, and he was just all gung ho about making sure that fake Indians get taken off of the list of of uh, what is protected by the Indian Arts and Crafts Act. Fake Indians. What is a fake Indian? Well, growing up, I used to call them rubber chicken shamans. I used to call them apples. That means that they're red on the outside and white on the inside. We had all kinds of Twinkies we used to call them. We also had kinds of negative names we would call what those people have learned to call fake Indians. And uh, Hoskins was one of those people calling out fake Indians. And when he said fake Indians, he specifically, I know this because I lived in Oklahoma, he specifically meant Cherokees that were in Cherokee homeland, especially those of us in Alabama. And I've never said this in front of a big group of people. None of my chiefs in my state or any of them I've ever talked to have believed me, but I'm going to tell you this. When I used to sell flutes to the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma's gift shop and heritage center, when I used to sell them there, back before really loud, Chad Smith was the chief back then, and he was kind of loud, although I have a picture of the original Chief Chad Smith on my, my Instagram, who looks an awful lot like me. Didn't look like the one that I met. But when Chad Smith was the, uh, the chief, I used to sell flutes to their gift shops and all over. Um, I got to meet a lot of people. I got to meet people in government and people here and there. And I'm a fairly good listener. Y'all know me as a talker, but I listen really well and I have incredible hearing. Um, but uh, one of my friends that was on their council mentioned that they had wanted to build casinos in my state of Alabama for a long time. And uh, they had already had plans to do that. Some of you that have an IQ over 100 have already figured out where this is going. And I'm not accusing them of this. I heard this straight from people that sat on the council. They had planned on opening casinos in Alabama. Like I said, many, many of people on the councils of the tribes that I've talked with don't believe me today. And that's fine. You know, maybe my grandkids will have to deal with it. I don't know. Maybe none of us will deal with it. I have my own philosophy and theories about that kind of stuff, but I don't normally talk to people about them. Um, but uh, they were planning on doing that. And I know it's been a long, hard battle trying to figure out how they can disprove enough people in my state, which we have one federally recognized tribe. Coincidentally, I grew up with them. And uh, those Creek Indians are the reason that the Cherokee Nation or any others don't have casinos in my state yet. And uh, anyway, I have felt for the longest time after my friend who was a council member in the CNO told me that uh, they were wanting to put casinos out there. I felt for the longest time that that was why they wanted to call anybody who is Cherokee outside of Oklahoma fake. And to be honest with you, the CNO has called the Eastern Band fake, and they continually call <laughs> the Katuas, which still require a blood quantum of a certain ranking to, uh, to be a member of their tribe, uh, as the Eastern Band does to some degree. Um, but uh, Native people and our customs, they've, they've changed. You know, our families marry outside, and, and that's actually the reason that a lot of uh, Indians still live here in Tennessee, which if I remember right, there's a state tribe or two, I believe, here in Tennessee now. Uh, state tribes are looked down upon by a lot of federal tribes, uh, mainly federal tribes like the CNO that don't live around other state tribes. To my knowledge, there are no state tribes in Oklahoma. Uh, state tribes that live around federal tribes, they usually get along pretty good. Like, for example, the uh, Poor Spanda Creek Indians help a lot of people out. <laughs> They're good folks. Like I say, I've got cousins that are members. You know, I'm, I'm not telling you a story here. Here in recent times, a friend of mine from Oklahoma that now lives in London, and uh, I hadn't talked to him in forever, and he's been writing some books for a while and stuff, but uh, living in London, he's not necessarily connected to a lot of stuff back home, but he sent me an email yesterday, or today, it's been just a few hours ago, really, that uh, there's somebody out there putting me down saying that I'm a member of a fake tribe and this person actually had enough uh, what uh, people that speak Spanish call cajones to post 
little bits and pieces of my family tree on his his uh, blog post and uh, I recognize these kind of people immediately because I've seen a lot of their work everywhere and unfortunately I'm not one of those people who have a IQ under a hundred or under a hundred and I don't know <laughs> you can call it what you like um, but he posted a lot of things disproving my family history and he proved back to my grandparents what my family history is I'll tell you something people like that who are really ignorant usually are led by people who are using them and that kind of gives you an idea of what's going on in the US today a lot of US politics and stuff that you see and stuff in the news is all people using people who have a lesser IQ or people who are addicted to something that need their fix all the time whatever it may be drugs alcohol uh, propaganda something or another got their got to have their fix uh, people can use that against you and most people don't know that and they don't know they're being used and they don't care for the most part the CNO chief Hoskins at this point uh, he had written a law back in 2014 or 15 or something trying to ban non federally recognized Indian products from his state and uh, their tribe had quit buying my flutes forever ago. There's a lot of Indian tribes, a lot of stuff y'all don't know about me, a lot of Indian tribes and schools, Native American schools, actually use my flutes, my flute making kits, my videos, my instruction. Sometimes they use my assistants in person and sometimes they don't. I've been all the way around the, the globe like that, uh, doing things, helping educate. And uh, that having been said, uh, I do sell to a number of Native American places today, cultural centers and historic sites and things like that, and I sell my flutes there. And I give educational presentations, but uh, Chief Hoskins wrote this law that time back when he wasn't really doing anything as a chief. He was some kind of speaker for the state of Oklahoma. He wrote that law, and he got sued by somebody. The state got sued, and they rescinded the law. And that woman, fortunately, was in that meeting with us, one of those other smart people that I know, or that I got to listen to that was in the Senate meeting. Now, Hoskins really wants to get rid of all of us state tribe members and really anybody else as they have always wanted to that carries the name Cherokee in their family bloodline that aren't a member of the CNO. Although the member of CNO, I do know one member who has had some ties with a tribe in Alabama specifically who uh, I think she could only prove when she tried to join that tribe that she was one one thousandth Indian. I don't know how you could prove that you're a thousandth anything. Uh, that would be like the invasion of the Moors into into Spain, maybe. I mean, I don't I don't know. I really don't know. But she knows who I'm talking about. She'll she'll watch this video. She will. It'll pass around amongst their little group, and uh, they'll probably be unhappy with me for whatever reason. I'm not saying anything negative about them, just stating the things that I know as a fact and what I have learned over the years. But uh, anyway, they have a thing that, that a lot of tribes were worried about for a long time called the Task Force. The Task Force was a group trying to disprove a lot of Native people, especially ones of us that are seen by the public, trying to disprove us for a while. And, and uh, I had the Task Force contact DC sometime in the past about me and my chi tribal chief at that time, a really great woman. Uh, so uh, my chief at that time was a great and powerful woman. Like a lot of my dad's family, she was only about so high. You know, I remember hugging her just before she died and she didn't come up to my shoulders. Uh, her family had stayed in Gunnersville, just like my dad's family stayed in Gunnersville and some of them came from here Adams Tennessee but she spoke up for me and uh, told them all they needed to hear you know it wasn't a difficult task they asked was I a member of the tribe she said yes and everything was taken care of but uh, you know chiefs change a lot of them do the CNO had a chief who I met before we left Oklahoma and before he was chief that I really liked and I, I had appreciated him because while he was in office his wife was from Muskogee if I remember right and like I said I grew up with Creek Indian people and got along with them quite a bit and tend to get along with them better today than I do a lot of other people but Cherokees have done that for some time and 
I don't know if you know much about Cherokee culture, but whenever somebody asks me, a person who speaks historically about my people, is this Cherokee? And I'm holding this flute here. This flute is not Cherokee Indian. This flute is in the key of E, <laughs> which almost makes it a Greek flute in some respect because it's on a Pythagorean scale. Um, but it's not. It's made based on other flutes that I made. And the pattern of the fingerings here come from a flute. And I've said this in other videos. You may have missed my About Me video or one that I made that talked about the origin of flutes. But this flute here is based on a fingering pattern from a five-hole flute that I copied. I had the honor of copying from Cherokee, North Carolina. That was a historically accurate flute, that one was. That flute was old. I wasn't allowed to keep my hands on it for very long. I mean, it was just long enough I could make a good copy of it. And I have a copy of it I play in some videos. It's almost identical this one I adapted the fingering pattern to this flute so that I could make it larger and lower in tone. And so there's a lot of stuff you don't know about flute making. All of you. Uh, and I try to go over this when I can, but you know, getting back to the subject at, at hand here, uh, when I speak about Cherokee and people ask me, is this or is that Cherokee? I remember back to when I lived in Oklahoma and I sold some things to the Cherokee Nation's gift shop that weren't flutes. I sold some clocks to them. And my friend at the time, who was uh, working there, she said that some people come through and didn't want the clocks that I had posted. And it's because the number 12 was wrong. And I cited countless references about where this number 12 is from and how it's accurate. And they're, I mean, they date back to the 1800s, so we knew that my version was right. But the thing is that Cherokee dialects are different from clan to clan. Some of us say things, do things, know things. And, and in some cases, I don't know if you know what a Chiricahua Apache is versus a regular Apache. <laughs> a little bit of history there. That's something for you to research. But I'll tell you, Chiricahuas get really tall. Um, there's a difference between some of us. And uh, different clans of Cherokee do and eat things that are different and know things that are different and sometimes somebody will say something's Cherokee and it may be something that some of us shared from one clan to another but you may have well called them seven different tribes of people instead of just you know one group and I know Hoskins I know a lot of y'all out there are bird clan and wild potato clan I know I've got <laughs> my family had clan clan rivals that you know they had problems with people from certain groups and what have you but uh, anyway, the uh, things that go from one clan to the next are different enough that the CNO didn't like my number 12 on that clock because it was wrong, even though uh, historically it was definitely not wrong. It was just from a different area. And uh, a lot of things have changed in different ways there, too. I know, having read the Baker Rolls, that there's a lot of people on there that I'm pretty sure were originally in Oklahoma before Cherokees ever made it there. Uh, there's Cherokees from Arkansas, and there's Cherokees that currently live in Mexico. You're welcome to look this stuff up. Now, there's a town in Mexico I've been to. I don't know if any of the Cherokee Nation has been there, of Oklahoma, <laughs> but I've been to towns called Cherokee in Mexico. And there's some Cherokee that live in Texas and some that live in California, and a lot of them fight a good fight, but they don't get recognition by their state and it's hard to get federal recognition because of the wrong people who are sitting on the different boards of this that and the other that don't want to give different groups of people recognition for who they are and what they know and blah bitty blah bitty blah and it has never really affected me much and it won't affect me today or tomorrow and if any of it ever does affect me I'd be really surprised because it's not like that for me I, I am who I am I'm not somebody saying that there's somebody that they're not. I'm not from a fake tribe. My tribe's from Guntersville, Alabama. And historically, there have been native people in Guntersville, Alabama because of countless reasons. I don't know if y'all know this, but if an Indian woman married a white man, they could stay in the town that he lived in. If uh, you had land grants, like some of my family do in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, 
uh, the government made a treaty with a group of people and let them live there. Okay? Not a lot of Muscogees got that that I know of, but a lot of Cherokees got that because they were on one side or the other. Y'all know about uh, a certain member of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma that was uh, the first Indian to ever become a Brigadier General. Stan Wadi, I believe, right? Uh, was a member of the uh, Confederate soldiers and he was a Brigadier General. I have a granddad who was the first native in the U.S. Army to be a Brigadier General. And the U.S. Army didn't always work with Cherokees, but you know, when people put brother against brother as, there again, I feel like certain groups of people of my own people do, uh, there is some turmoil and people choose sides. And you know, I'm, I'm telling you guys, I'm not on anybody's side. Sometimes I wonder if I'm even on my own side telling y'all some of my secrets. But uh, these secrets here are not anything that proves or disproves who I am. Uh, here lately, like I said, my friend that moved to London sent me this email about some guy's blog post that he made about fake Indians and, and he has information about my family back to my grandparents, which my God, that's love my grandparents, but they're not as far back as it goes, nor as far back as I know about, you know, by any means. I mean, like I said, I'm sitting here in Adams, Tennessee talking about a great, great aunt who was born in 1809, I think. Um, my mom's dad was born in 1898. He was in the U.S. Army for 46 years. And some little person who hides behind a name of Sam or whatever he calls himself wants to post five minutes worth of his data thievery online, his data mining, and call it my family history and disprove whatever my family is. There's countless books that show that my family is this, that, and the other, uh, that they're Indian. I've actually got uh, census records showing that my dad's uh, aunts and uncles were black, you know, from, from North Alabama. And they most certainly weren't black. I mean, the census guy knew that, but he walked up on them and thought maybe that they were slaves living there. And so you can see the census record says B because they were either B or W, where you come from. And he wrote them down as B and drew a line through it. A line through it on a census record. Paper was really valuable back in those days. I don't know how many of you are following me or most of you are off drinking or smoking something right now, but... He drew a line through the letter B, which meant black, and put W. So, here we are. Uh, I do have some black ancestry, which I think I may have mentioned on my uh, About Me video, but they're actually from South America and eventually from Spain. My grandmother was not from Spain. She was from Panama. Uh, her, grand, her father was from Spain, but uh, in the Kuna tribe, you know, you either are or you're not. You're not a half-breed or you're not this side of the other just living with them on vacation you're a Kuna Indian just like I mentioned about other people um, but anyway like I said this whole deal that's happening today and I hate making videos that date things today is May 25th by the way I didn't tell you that happy birthday <laughs> um, the date uh, of things tells you that today is in between the time period from when they opened up the Indian Arts and Crafts Act again in the uh, 2023 and in August or September that we hear the verdict, which isn't supposed to include discluding um, state-recognized tribes of Indians. There's a lot of state-recognized tribes, actually. Some of them, like I mentioned, the Lumbees are bigger than most of the other federal tribes that I've ever heard of. Uh, and the Lumbees are kind of stuck in a catch-22, God bless them where they can't become a federal tribe. It's not like legally allowed for some goofy reason. Some president or somebody or another made some proclamation that they couldn't become a federal tribe and, and they had to stay where they're at, but they're native. They're good people, smart people. Uh, like I said, the uh, judge and reverend that I had the honor of being in his presence on that uh, Senate meeting was a brilliant man, the first person we got to hear from from the Lumbee tribe. Brilliant man. I have a lot of respect for him. But uh, there were a lot of people that spoke, like I said, and, and the people that spoke, the ones that had a lot of fire in them, and even people that were chatting back in the, the online chat portion of the, the Senate meeting, uh, the, the uh, stenographer or whoever she was in the Senate had to speak up and said, by the way, those of you who are chatting uh, and saying negative things here, I want to let you know all this is being recorded. And those were some people that were, uh, let's see, what do you call them today? Uh, they are uh, 
allies of the, the task force or of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma or whatever, or some of them were the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma, like I said, people that have negative things to say that just grew up away from the rest of us and don't know any better. But uh, I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about my history and stuff, and I really haven't mentioned my family history. The only people that are currently privy to my family history uh, are my family and my tribe. They have that, that information. The government doesn't require that we send our family information to them, that we only provide it to our tribes. And my tribe is my family, even though uh, Miss Gina, my, uh, my original chief, was a, a great woman compared to a lot of people that I've met that won't stand up for them. We've had some great people. We really have. I don't know if y'all know this, but the uh, Chief Bushy head of the Eastern Band of Cherokees is from Guntersville, Alabama. So there's some medicine people that that uh, were different kind of medicine people. People that kept sacred information. Things that I probably won't ever share. Things that cousins have shared and that I have learned and that the grandparents have shared that I won't ever share for the sake of keeping it sacred. But I will tell you, just to set the record straight, some little guy hiding behind some blog post, digging up whatever information he can find on me, omitting, you know, like I said, I worked for the newspaper. <laughs> they omit the parts of the story that don't lead you in the direction that they want you to go. A lot of you are nodding your heads right now. This past year, you've learned a lot of that. This past few months, you've learned a lot of that. Some of the most amazing speakers in our public world today haven't changed sides, but they've been booted from their sides. And you know what I'm talking about. Not all Indians are Democrats or Republicans or Libertarians. Uh, not a, some of us, you know. There was a, a great Paiute medicine man that said we shouldn't follow any of the... And I... God, I'm probably going to be persecuted for being racist one day <laughs> just for saying white, you know, but he said not to follow any of the white people's ways, and he wasn't wrong. And that's what I feel like a lot of these people that are putting us down are doing. A lot of them are white. I mean, like I said, there were non-natives in this uh, Senate meeting that were blasting off some crap that they heard somewhere or another, which wasn't the truth. There's stuff that I've heard other people say uh, that are officials that I've mentioned recently <laughs> that isn't the truth and it's because they grew up not knowing they haven't been around and don't know and even here in Tennessee I've experienced it I had a guy that uh, come up and talked to me cordially as a as a friend would who was native and he went and denounced everybody in front of me and and that's because I am native and some of those people were descendants which is what the certain groups of people that allow one one thousandth blood Indians into their tribes, that's what those are, is descendants, people that don't have a historical calling to, especially their area, or a lot of their history. And they're only just now learning their language, which is great. It's a good thing. But there's only three things that I had mentioned here recently to uh, certain groups of people that they really make up a, a group of people, regardless if it's a Native American tribe or ancient, Sumerians or people from Lithuania, it's their language, their religion, and their art. Those three things determine if you are wherever you're at. I don't know if all of the people in one tribe or the other anywhere still speak their language. A lot of my grandma's people from Panama still speak their language, but not all of them. A lot of my wife's family in Michoacan, Mexico speak their original language. It's in their town hall. They have meetings there in their original language, not Spanish. Mexicans aren't Spanish. <laughs> and half of the people in the world that speak Spanish aren't from Spain. <laughs> it's making my wife laugh. It's a quote from a really great uh, Chicano from California that I grew up listening to, watching on TV. Uh, but uh, people that speak a certain language, people in Brazil speak Portuguese. Do you think that they're from Portugal? No. But um, the Michoacanos, 
they speak their language. Terrascan people and Perpatia, you know, there's a Perpatia town hall right in downtown Michoacan. I mean, in Kamekwaro, I've been there, you know. I don't know if a lot of the people that make these laws that say that people from Mexico aren't native, most of you believe that they're, I say you, people in the U.S., believe that they're not native. If there's any Mexicanos that are watching me or people from anywhere south of here, I hope that you know where your family's from. You really need to. And uh, any of you, and I was talking to a guy here who helped me find the gravestones of some of my, my family from the 1800s. His family has some Cherokee blood in them. And uh, he said, I took my ancestry DNA test and it doesn't show up. There's a reason it doesn't show up. And he even knew. He, he said, but it's because they don't want people to know. You know, and I'm like, yeah, that's right. You know, but uh, on my ancestry DNA, which none of you are privy to, there again, it's family. Uh, it says that I have family who is early Alabama settlers. And you can go back and figure out whoever that was, Norwegian, English, whoever, Scottish, somebody or another that come to Alabama. But I also have Tennessee early settlers and Oklahoma early settlers and Arkansas early settlers. And the CNO may not recognize, a lot of them do. I have some good friends that are from the CNO, great people. I appreciate you. But uh, the ones who want to disprove other Cherokee tribes that especially the ones of you that don't know the agenda. Um, you have to learn. There's a lot of Cherokee history in Arkansas. It was on the way. It was the last stop. I mean, look where you do your stomp dance at. They know who I'm talking about and what I'm talking about. Please. That's a stomping ground for a reason. That wasn't annexed into Arkansas. That's been Arkansas since before y'all moved to Oklahoma. Okay? There's some history there for you non-natives to look up. Feel free to. But, uh, yeah, don't nobody stomp dance in Oklahoma? Come on. I mean, they do, but maybe in Muskogee. <laughs> That's a good one. But, uh, but anyway, like I said, I just wanted to clear up a little bit of this. Any of you that wonder who my family is and who they say they are, I belong to a state-recognized tribe in the beautiful state of Alabama that has more mounds in Alabama but my Mexicano friends don't get mad than the whole country of Mexico does. A lot of historical sites. Cherokees were the last people that were mound builders. We were the last ones that take up that religion. I mean, I have a probably a Choctaw great-grandma or so somewhere in there because of where they were from. I know that it happened. Plus, you can't always judge a book by its cover, but they kind of look Choctaw to me. <laughs> you know. But, uh, but anyway, and I'm saying this amongst photos of Cherokee people. Um, Anyway, like I said, I've posted pictures of a lot of my family and ancestors and stuff. Not that I have to. I've told you who some of them are. Not that I have to. It's not, uh, there's a lot of that that you have to look up. And then people will start disproving, you know, tons of people as being Indian or whatever. You know, whatever. Do what you, whatever inspires you to do in life. But here I am, talking to the world, letting you know that I am Native and I am Cherokee. And I've got family that's otherwise. My mom's dad was a Dakota or Lakota, an Ojibwe, however you want to call it. And her mom was a Kuna Indian. He met her when he left Minnesota, when he left Wisconsin. He grew up in Winona and moved to, uh, to Wisconsin and lived uh, near the uh, White Bear you know, Lake Reserve, I mean, with family. You know, and then he met my grandma in Panama when she was a teenager. And that's my mom's side of the family. My dad's family have lived in North Alabama and around the area. I mean, you can look at the map. One of my dear friends is a, actually teaches the Cherokee Nation groups their history, and he's not a member of, of a tribe. He's got a CDIB card proving he's Indian, but uh, he's not a member of a tribe. And he teaches their people history as I teach a lot of y'all history and have taught lots of other tribes history and so on and so on. I'm used to teaching Tahlequah as well. I left there because I wanted to, not because I had to. They probably would have absorbed me into the tribe some way or another if they, if they could, but I love my home. I love, you know, where I live. I didn't grow up in North Alabama. I lived there when I was a kid, but I didn't grow up there. I love that place. That's, that's our stomp grounds. It's not in Stokes.
Fort Smith. It's not there, it's in, it's in Gunnersville. Well, here we are. I've got a storyteller on my shoulder. I've had the original flute maker flying around me if you got to see that in the video. I'm going to play for you for a second. Thank <laughs> you.